All right, guys, so I'm going to cut the goofiness and the jokes I usually put at the beginning of videos because I don't know how long this video is going to go, and I want to make it very, very clear because this has been the most useful thing I've learned in the past couple years, and it's really changed how I look at business overall. And if you apply this to your businesses in 2020, you're going to have a massive edge over pretty much everybody, but you're also going to have a massive edge for the rest of your life in business. Because what I'm about to show you here makes building a successful business easy. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not putting it as easy in the make money online, get rich quick silliness that other people put out. That's not what I'm putting out there. There's lots of work involved. What I mean is that when you build the business like I'm going to show you right here and you use these strategies, especially going into 2020, when it's done right, the sales just come and the struggles that usually come with business when it comes to selling and getting people to look at your product and getting people to buy your product and getting market share, they're not really there. And for lack of better words, once you turn ads on, once you get past the first traction of getting your first 50 customers or so, growing the business becomes easy to the point as that getting sales is no longer the problem. The problem is ensuring that you keep the customer experience as high as possible and the quality as high as possible to maintain what I'm about to share right here. And I'm going to be straight up with you. This is not going to be a five minute video. It's probably going to take me 20 minutes as normal, but this will set you up for massive success in 2020. And if you don't do it, it is so hard to grow a business. And I didn't know this before, but every business that I've launched where it's gone and really taken off, it hit these qualifications I'm going to give you in this video. It always met these qualifications. And every single time I've launched a business and it kind of struggled or was hard to grow, or when the business became and started becoming hard to grow, it failed these qualifications. And I don't want there to be much fluff in this video, so I'm just going to dive straight into it. This is a list of qualifications I try to use whenever I start a business or I'm looking at my business. Whenever I work with businesses, we always apply this qualification list to it. And it's going to determine how well the business is going to work. It's such a good indicator. I'm going to share it with you because in 2020, it's not about a particular niche or a particular business method. It's about how you view your product and the product you bring to market and how it fits into that marketplace. Hyros, for example, we spend very, very little on ad spend and we get more business than we can actually handle right now. The return on ad spend is about eight to one at this point in time. That's cash. That's not payment plans, it's just cash. And that's awesome. That makes growing the business very easy. I also want to stress when I was growing HCOM, which was one of my wildly successful education businesses, it was very easy to grow that business at first as well because it met this list I'm about to give you right here. So when you're starting up a new business or you're looking at your current business, you should definitely do this with your current business. You want to apply this list to it. And if it meets this criteria, you're probably going to do pretty well. If it doesn't meet this criteria, it's going to be hard. And in business, we don't want to do hard things. We want everything to be easy. If the work is done, if we put in 60 hours of work, it should be easy to take it off sales, getting customers, getting word of mouth, making our ads work and making them very profitable. It all should be easy. Because in my experience, my most successful businesses have been the ones that are easiest to grow. It's because they met this checklist. So ask yourself these things when you're thinking about the product that you're going to bring to market. So the first thing you have to ask yourself when you're bringing something to market is do you have a problem advantage? And by problem advantage, I mean a problem that isn't solved. A perfect example of this is with my sophomore business, Market Hero which is now Hyros, the company just kind of transformed that and we really pivoted the focus of our company. That company was very hard to scale. I was able to scale it, but it was so difficult. And the reason why it was so difficult is because we weren't solving a new problem. There were already 15 other autoresponders or email management companies on the market, probably more than that. And so growing that company was very hard because every person we were trying to get on board, we were trying to get them Let's imagine you have a refrigerator in your house. If I gave you a refrigerator or said I'd sell you a refrigerator for $2,000 that was 50% better than your refrigerator, would you lug your refrigerator out of the house to replace with my new refrigerator? No, because your problem's already solved. It's not worth that effort. And so even if you're bring something in the marketplace, it's 20, 30% better. It's not going to do very well if the problem's already solved. It's going to be very hard to sell it. Selling a $2,000, $3,000 per month account at Market Hero was so hard to do. Now on the flip side, if you look at Hyros, for example, 
we solve a problem that really hasn't been solved to the extent that we want it to be solved at in the marketplace. Because of that, it's very easy to sell the product. It's very easy to run ads to it because the problem's just not solved. And it's a very, very, very difficult problem to solve that hasn't been solved in the marketplace yet. And so you need to ask yourself, before you bring a product to market, has someone already solved this? And if so, how many people have already solved this? And if 15 other people, 60 other people have already solved this problem, probably not the best product to be making. Now, this isn't always the case. You might be thinking, oh man, I sell ad management, I sell funnel building, I sell uh, PPC services, I sell SMMA. There, there are ways around this if you are not solving a new problem. But this is the biggest edge you could ever have, especially if the market for it is large and has money. Now, there's two spectrums to this. Is the market large? Can it go mass market? So for example, a market that would be mass market would be like makeup, for example. If you look at Kylie Jenner, mass market. Millions and millions, hundreds of millions of girls will buy makeup. Or does the marketplace have money? So for example, if you look at a lot of specific softwares, like Segment, for example, they work with businesses that are really into mining their data and putting it all together and aggregating it together. It's a very expensive software, but the businesses that they're marketing to usually are doing hundreds of thousands, millions of dollars, tens of millions of dollars per year. So their software can be very expensive. So you want to look at those two markets. Can it be super mass or is the market I'm marketing to have very deep pockets and willing to spend to solve that problem? Can it be a mass market? Or does the market have money? So for example, if you're selling how to make your own horse saddle from scratch, probably not gonna do very well. It's not a mass market and people aren't gonna pay $5,000, $10,000 for that product. So think about those things first. That's probably the single biggest denominator of everything. Now, the next thing you need to look at when you're starting your business is how painful is the problem? Just because it's mass market, just because it's a deep pocket market, doesn't mean that the marketplace is going to buy your product. So for the most part, people buy to get out of pain. And so when you're thinking about your problem, you want to find a problem that I like to call a tier 10 problem. It has to be losing people a lot of money. It has to be causing them a lot of pain in their life, or it has to be a, leaving a lot of benefit for them on the table. If you can get into these areas right here, these things right here are going to allow you to build a business very quickly. Because if you're actually solving a significant pain, a very big problem that's really, really hurting people in their lives and fixing it for them, it's going to grow very quickly. Because all you have to do at that point is post on Facebook. Your product should be in a market where the problem is so unsolved and so painful that you can post on your Facebook wall and you'll get five to 10 customers if your friends are in that niche and everything else is going on there. For example, on my Facebook wall, most of my friends are in the marketing niche. So if I post something on my wall, regardless of my following or whatnot, a lot of people will buy the expensive product that we're selling at Hyros because they're like, oh crap, I really need this. If you can't post your product on your Facebook wall and people will not hit you up to buy it, it's not gonna work. Not at the ease that you need it to. Not the ease that you need it to. So focus and ask yourself, is the problem I'm solving extremely painful in some way? And then the way around the first two things I talked about, you might be saying, well, I don't have the most original product ever. I'm, I'm just starting up my business. That's very common. The way around this is you wanna find markets that are underserved. You wanna find markets that are underserved and you can bring business models to those marketplaces. So for example, one of the ways that HCOM, my education business worked very, very well is in the Shopify marketplace, when I first got into it, there weren't any webinars running. There weren't any long form sales videos. There weren't any complete classes that were really providing all the things that we wanted to provide at HCOM. And I think to this day, we still provide the most of, I think to this day, we still provide the most of, of any education product in the Shopify niche. That was our number one goal right there. But when we first got into this marketplace was very underserved. And while there were other Shopify courses, none were really running ads or, or at the level of marketing that we were. And so that was our huge advantage because the marketplace, especially on YouTube, was very underserved. And so that's how that was able to grow very easily. It was the easiest scaling situation I've ever been in when it comes to growing a business. And I want to expand on that just to make it even more clear. So what we did right there is we saw a business model that was working in other niches and we transplanted it into the Shopify niche. Okay, we took the refined business model that was working in other niches that we saw working and we transplanted it to an underserved market. I'm going to explain how to do this with a more traditional type of business right now. But just to clarify, look at business models that are working in other niches. Look at funnels, look at strategies, look at offers that are working in other niches, and then make a similar offer in an underserved market. This is the key.
See, what most people are doing really wrong is they look at a business model that's working in a super overserved niche, which is Shopify right now, perfect example. And then they say, okay, cool. They copy niche and the business model. This is hard. This is easy. Do easy. Do easy. But let's take this back a notch. You can find big problems that are very painful if you look outside the common niches. So a lot of you guys are trying to do SMMA, social media marketing for businesses or paid traffic management. It's the most unoriginal business model ever. But the way you tweak this to make this an absolute crushing winner is you wanna take it to specific niches. You wanna make yourself the specific best option in specific niches. So for example, in the last video I mentioned selling to pediatricians. So what you could do is for example, let's imagine you were selling SEO. I'm, I'm pretty familiar with SEO because I used to do it a lot in the past. If you wanted to have a wildly successful SEO business, you don't want to sell to everybody in a niche because you're not solving a problem. There's, there's no shortage of general SEO companies doing SEO for people. It's not a problem. It's not, it's not very painful either because most people who have an SEO service already or, or care about SEO have already gone and, and gotten an SEO service. So you're not really able to really tweak any pain. You're not really able to offer any specific problem solving. But what if you went out there and you created an SEO agency that's just around selling the pediatricians? And so you built an SEO blog network or a PBN network, if that's still a thing, that's completely based around pediatricians. All of your website templates, all the things you built were based around pediatricians. And you were also able to provide funnels for pediatricians that increased their sales instantly because you put it on their website. And you were also an expert at helping them provide new services to their clients. That's a tri fecta of all sorts of things that would blow up their business. And because it's so specialized to their business, you're the only person who can really solve their problem, which is they want to get more clients in your specific way. And so at that point in time, you have a product right there that is so unique to the marketplace, so different than everybody else and solves their problems so much better than everybody else. You're 10 times better than any other general SEO agency. And because of that, you can charge a premium and you can get sales very easily. Because who is the pediatrician going to go to? Are they going to go to a general SEO agency? No. They're going to go to the guy that can not only, that's SEO is not only specifically designed to rank pediatricians in Google, it also optimizes their sales and helps them make more money by offering new services in a different way. That right there is a massive problem. That's a problem being solved and that's an underserved marketplace. Now, I don't know about the market of pediatricians right now, but you can do this in so many different niches out there. And this is how you need to look at it if you're not going to be building a completely original problem solving type business. Those businesses are usually pretty expensive. Those usually businesses are usually pretty expensive. Now, the other way around this is also, is it a new opportunity? Is your business presenting a new opportunity? For example, I mentioned in the info space, if you go type in Shopify and YouTube right now, there's about 50 people, all with the same exact thumbnails, all selling the same exact course. And it, it, it's almost reached like a fever level. Okay, I, I guarantee you probably saw like six Shopify ads today or something like that uh, as you're browsing, probably while you're already watching my videos. It's a fever level. And th that is the hardest selling position you could ever be in because you're selling an opportunity that's old. You're selling, a, you're, you're trying to fix a problem that's already been fixed. You're not the best in the marketplace. And the problem isn't very painful because all the people that weren't enough pain to buy the product originally have, have probably already bought something. So it's a very difficult sales position. Whereas I see all sorts of info products out there, education products offering winding ways to make money, like completely new weird ways. I saw one person doing like how to flip trailers, absolutely crushing it, absolutely crushing it. And so I think what you need to be doing in 2020 is if you're getting into spaces that are saturated, perfect examples of this right now are Shopify dropshippers. I, I know dropshippers. I work with dropshippers every single day to make 20 to $30,000 a day. It's still a completely viable model, completely viable model. But you have to find some way to offer something that someone else isn't offering. You have to find some way to get off the beaten path. You have to present a new opportunity. You have to present things in a new different way. For example, in the e-commerce space, what Dave Asprey did with Bulletproof to present coffee as a new opportunity is he presented it as a brain booster instead of uh, that well, however Folgers has been presenting it the last 20, 30 years. You have to take your product and you have to present it as a new opportunity. And so it needs to either focus on a market that's underserved so you can present a, a new way to solve a problem for them or it has to be a new opportunity. And then the next thing you need to ask yourself is do I have a traffic advantage? 
One of my keys at HCOM when I was scaling that business is not many people were running high ticket, long form sales funnels on YouTube. There was no one doing it, especially in Shopify. We were one of the first people to ever do it. Because of that, when we did it, boom, just nuclear bomb. And when you applied all the other things that I've been talking about in this video and we presented it as a new opportunity, absolutely caught fire. You need to find where you have a very strong traffic advantage. A perfect example of this is everybody who's doing info marketing or education, they're all stuck on Facebook ads. There's nothing wrong with Facebook ads, but you don't have any traffic advantage there. You're not catching any marketplace uh, that nobody else is catching. And the same thing also goes with Shopify, people that are running drop shipping ads. They're all on Facebook. They are all on Facebook. And for the most part, if you look at most businesses, they're all stuck on Facebook. None of them are really figuring out YouTube. And if you want to see how we have scaled up at HCOM or even like get consulted on your YouTube business, again, this is only for like 1% of people who are watching this video. This is for actual business owners that are actually making money. There is a link below that breaks down exactly how we scaled that business to eight figures and how we're actually scaling all of our other businesses on YouTube right now. But that's only for business owners. That's like 1% of the channel. To get back on path though, you need to understand that you need to be able to go where traffic is new. So if you're jumping into this right now, if you're able to get on ad platforms where other people aren't really on yet, that gives you a massive advantage. It gives you a whole entire cut of the market. And if you're able to bring a new opportunity, a new problem there, it works like a nuclear bomb. So you need to look at it and say, hey, this is niche right here. Where are people in this niche not at? Where are people not advertising? And if you look from the cross between Facebook to Google ads, there's a lot. There's a lot of opportunity there. And that's one place I would look. And then the next most important question which is almost, it's almost up there with the problem advantage that we talked about at the beginning, is can you be the clear number one or number two in a marketplace? If you look at any marketplace, how it works is all the money goes to the number one and number two business. That's every marketplace ever. Now, don't get me wrong. There's plenty of marketplaces where the number three, number four, number five, number six make tens of millions or hundreds of millions of dollars. There's, there's examples of that. I'm saying the vast majority goes number one, number two. Now, that also being said, when you're number one or number two, it becomes very easy to grow the business because you're, with, you're who people are gonna go with by default. You don't have to do any really huge legwork to get people to come with you, jump on board with you. If your product is superior and you already have that number one and number two place in the marketplace. And so what I see a lot of people doing is they get in marketplaces where they're gonna be like number eight. They're gonna be number 15 in the marketplace. That's so hard to grow the business. That's so hard. It's so hard. No one's going to go down their role decks of who they're going to choose uh, product wise. Go, do, 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 do. Okay, I'm going to go with number 15. That's not how it works. When I'm going and looking for the best restaurant on Yelp, I don't go to number four. When I'm trying to go and decide what type of product to buy, I don't go with, the, I don't go with number three. I don't go with number six. I go with number one or number two if number one doesn't fit me quite like I need it to. So before you even think about getting in a marketplace, you need to ask yourself, can I be number one and number two? And what does that mean? You have to have the best product. You have to have the best customer experience. Okay. You have to have the best brand. Now you also need to understand if you're getting into a new marketplace or a place where the problem hasn't been solved, it's very easy to be number one or number two. It's easy to be number one and number two if you did that pediatrician thing I was talking about before. If you present something as a new opportunity and you're the only person selling that new opportunity, it's very easy to be number one and number two. And as long as you don't act like an idiot and get lazy, you can keep that number one and number two spot. But you don't want to be getting into a marketplace where you're number 15. You don't want to be getting into a marketplace where the problem's already solved and you're number six in the marketplace. That's exactly what I did at Market Hero. And while we're able to scale that, because I'm very good at marketing, insanely tough, insanely tough compared to the businesses I'm running now. And then the final thing you need to ask yourself is would I be cool working on this for the next five years if it had no return? This is the magic question that you can't do anything that I just laid out without. And the reason for that is because the way you become good at something is you have to love it. You're not going to see any NBA players who absolutely hate basketball that became one of the top 10 players in NBA history. They all loved it. If you look at Kobe Bryant's documentary, the guy is obsessive with basketball. That's all he did all day long for years, 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 years. If you look at Tom Brady, same exact thing. So 
the way you're going to build a great business with great people that delivers a superior product is you're going to have to love it. You're going to have to love it. You're going to have to have to be super excited about it. If you've ever played a video game where you're just so excited and you can't put it down, that needs to be your business. And if that's not your business, look, you might be starting your first business. You might not be super excited about it, whatever. Apply this checklist. You're going to get results from it and you should be excited about starting a business. If you're not in love with building a business, like it's just it, get a job or get a skill set that allows you to get paid a lot. You don't have to be the business owner. However, you must, must, must be able to wake up every single morning and be pumped to work on your business. It can't be a drag. You have to be excited about what you're building. And when you stop being excited about what you're building, when it becomes tiring, when it becomes a job, it's not going to work. For example, I'm the laziest person ever when I'm not in love with what I'm doing. I can't do it. Every job I've ever worked, I've been fired from. I have a lot of trouble doing day-to-day -day stuff that keeps my life maintained. That's why I have a super minimalistic lifestyle because I have such trouble doing everything, anything except what I love doing. When you love doing it, you have this massive advantage and you can almost overcome this list of stuff. I'm just saying, I don't know if it's completely worth it because we want business to be easy. We want it to always be easy and fun. That's how we grow a business. It should be easy and fun. So we should set ourselves up to work on a business that is easy and fun. But even if your business is hard, you can overcome it if you love it enough. But that's going to be a lot of turmoil. That's going to be a lot of blood and sweat. But that's the key. You're never going to become the best at something unless you're obsessed with it. And in order to be number one or number two in the marketplace, in order to solve a problem better than anybody else, you have to be obsessed with it. You have to love it. And so... As you go into 2020, what I would do is I would lay out this list and I put the list below this video as well. I'll put the list below the video so you can go through it and, and kind of put the checklist and ask yourself these questions. Because some of these questions are going to be really hard. And you're going to look at your business and you're going to say, it doesn't fit this bill. Or how do I build a business like this? How do, I, how do I go and put something that fits in there? It's tough. It's tough. But you only want to build a business once. You don't want to do it five times, right? So it's better to make sure you're starting off correctly right here. And as you go into 2020, most people aren't doing this. Most people are doing the exact opposite. I've done the exact opposite because the business model in internet marketing right now is try to find a cookie cutter template and copy it. That's, that's what the structure is. That's what people are trying to do. Look at a business that's working. Look at a product that's working. Make the same exact thing. I've done the same exact thing with all my businesses. The ones that I've, I've turned off with my supplement company, Spectre. I, I, I sold my part in it because there was no way I could go. It didn't, it didn't fit any of these advantages right here. Even my other business, Conquer, it was a, a marketplace. I sold that to ClickFunnels because there was no way. The problem was already solved. Fiverr already solved that problem 10 times better, 10 times better. And I'm not gonna spend five years of my life doing something where I don't have these advantages because I want my business to be easy and I want it to be fun. And if you apply this to your business and you get all these things lined up, your business will be easy and it will be fun. And so that's the video. That's what you should be selling in 2020. It shouldn't be based around some niche or magic tactic or this business model, this business model. It should fit this list. If you fit this list, it doesn't matter what the business model is. You're selling what people want. You're selling what you love. And you're selling something that has so many advantages in your corner that it will become easy to scale up, easy to make money with. And then all you have to worry about is providing a top tier customer experience, which is actually extremely difficult. But if you love it, it's not going to be hard. And that's it. That's the end of this series, guys. I'm going to be doing a live stream this weekend. If you want to make sure that you see that live stream, again, go subscribe, hit the like button, hit the notification bell. That's the only way you'll get notified for these live streams consistently. And I share a ton of stuff on these streams that I don't share anywhere else. Also, if you do have a business and you want to see how to scale it up on YouTube, you want to see how I've scaled businesses to eight figures on YouTube, there is a link right below this video. Again, that's for business owners only. If your business is not making 100,000, 200,000 a year, it's completely useless to you. So that being said, let me know your feedback below. Does this list make sense to you? Does it not make sense to you? Did you like the last few videos on 2020? Let me know also what you want to see me make videos on in the future. And I'll probably make videos based on that. I actually think I'm going to go see the new Star Wars movie and I might make a video on that next. And so I know you guys absolutely freak out for those ones. So stay tuned, hit the subscribe button, hit that like button. I'll see you in the next video.